Okay, everybody knows me, knows I'm a loud mouth and a busy body, and I ask a lot of questions, and Marguerite, my good friend over in Belfast Island, and her wonderful son John, who is just doing fabulously, John had autism. Now, I, I was questioning her on bread. When he, did he eat bread? And she said, yeah, he ate bread day and a couple times a day. So, because uh, I'm asking her, she had all kinds of, pro well, you know, obviously John had autism and we're trying to work with him. So, here, here's the deal. Um, she, she's sending me all the stuff and all the information and the documentation and all this. But to cut to the chase, uh, I see he's sending me all this stuff. Da, 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 da. Hold on, let me come back to where it makes sense. All right, let's just start here. We, we've gone through a lot of stuff, so let's just start here. Sulfur is something that seems to make him brighter. So I said, how much sulfur? She said, start off a quarter teaspoon, first four days, then twice a day, then after four days, up to a half a teaspoon. Now, so I said, this is important. No, no, no. no. She said, uh, Roger, there were so many things with John Jr. I don't know where to start. I mean, he was he was not in good shape. And she said, when she started, when we started talking, he was about a two, and now he's a nine. And the and the reason he's a nine, because every now and then she doesn't give him the the probiotics, and then he starts to um, to have some, you know, st it's called stimming, stimulated activity. But other than that, I see him on a I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Anyway, so here she is. Uh, I can't tell you a lot was to do with the gut because he couldn't go to the toilet. This is what I go. I say, what is the output? Show me the output. And every single one of them has digestive issues. You get that under control and you will settle your own little self down all by itself. And you'll, re and you'll recover. I'm going to tell you right now, you will recover. Not every time, but try it. See. It affects every part of his body. He couldn't talk, and it made the sounds of high-pitched humming bees. He was not in good shape. So, uh, Roger, I will tell you everything to help. Um, okay, because we're working with twins, the little twin. So, when you reach a milestone, it's like heaven's kissed you. Uh, so then I said, well, I'm glad everything's going good. So then she says, I, I've seen the psychologist's face. And she still wanted to put him on antidepressants. Do doctors even listen? I seen her face. She couldn't believe he's, his OCDs were all gone. I knew they were gone, but sometimes I question myself, like, am I imagining things? And I said, time will tell. So then another, this goes a little later, I said, how's John doing? Brilliant. He's doing fantastic. I can't keep up with him. He even kissed a girl at his football club. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's uh, that's a hard one. Uh, that's a tearjerker right there. You know, from going uh, in a different direction to this, he even kissed a girl at his football club. I've seen my boy yesterday learning the basics of rugby. Can you believe it? The community center knows John, but he never joined in because of his disabilities. I volunteered there a couple of years, but then John got jealous of the other kids and just wanted to play with. Uh, John got jealous of the other kids just wanted to play with everyone I go I go the children come to me like a magnet okay so she goes there the kids come to her like a magnet and I guess this upset him greatly and John doesn't like it so this week I was able to talk to children without John throwing John Jr. throwing a fit it's the little things that are amazing he's still being huffy but aren't all children in this heat. So I'm pretty good overwhelmed, I'm telling you right then. This is amazing. So um, she's sending me all this stuff. Da, 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 and he's out playing with all the kids. He's playing in the outside with the children. Very lucky. He's in a nice neighborhood. They all play together. And then she sent me a video of him out playing. Riding his little scooter. Look at this. John, you are doing fabulous, buddy. Fabulous. All right, okay, look, I'm scooting all around. There he goes. He goes all the way around the whole place. Isn't that something? So, he says, he says, it's just nonstop with John Jr. 
I have never had so much activity. He is having more one-to-one -one conversations. We're doing story time now. And uh, Roger, he picked... Oh, uh, I, I was asking her about the bread. I get. Oh, oh no, no, I was asking her about the skateboard. I said the skateboard's too. You know, his, his scooter is too long for that ramp. He's getting stuck on the ramp. Anyway, and I said I would get frustrated if that. <laughs> I'd smash the damn thing if I couldn't make it work. So anyway, so, but she says I can't believe he wanted a ramp. He never asked for anything. He's so gentle and well mannered. He breaks my heart. Um. He's he he go oh, he's going off of bread. He goes on bread. He still likes bread now. Yeah, and he eats it. So I don't think the bread is causing his issue, but this do doctor's saying that gluten causes everybody else's issue. I think it's because she's now feeding them this probiotics, and this is it. I don't get any money from anybody. The money does not do much for me. Primal defense is the whoops. Primal defense is what. I've been saying to try it. And the only reason I'm saying to try it because my friend Roger, that is a good friend of mine, he almost died. He said this is the thing that he thought brought him back. So, if it's good enough for Roger, it's good enough for Roger. I mean, it's good enough for you. Okay, now, this guy, these are very esteemed people talking, and I shouldn't be discussing this in this realm because I have no authority. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I feel confident to talk in this room because I have done a hell of a lot of investigation about bacteria and membranes and mucus and transition metals and enzymes and carboxylation and how the gut actually works. And I have found that virtually all chronic diseases and autism, feelings, emotions, depressions begin in the gut. And they begin in the gut because there is invasion in the gut. And why is there invasion in the gut? Because the mucus that was sliming the inside of your intestines is gone in places. And you say, well, why is it gone? Why did I lose that mucus? Well, you lost the mucus because the colony of bacteria that lived there was killed by an antibiotic, more than likely, and has not populated itself. It is now an invasion zone at best. And at worst, it's a, it's a colony of invasive microbes that are eating away at your intestines. Now, he claims if you take the gluten out of your diet, you're not going to be as ill. But I say there is no reason to take the gluten out of your diet. I eat bread multiple times, and the people that I have been working with eat bread, and when they were sick, they were eating bread, and they're still eating bread now that they are not sick. Now, if you ever saw leaf cutter ants, they go out and they get a bunch of leaves. Well, they can't eat those leaves. They can't eat those leaves. They bring the leaves back and put them in, in, in their nest, and if there's no fungus back there to make those leaves turn into edible food, well, they're starved to death. Simple as that. They, those pieces of greenery and the things that you eat are the same product that you need to make your body work. They cannot eat those greens. We cannot eat anything that we take in. We didn't eat it. We just brought it into our body. What happens then? We have enzymes. We have microbes. We have bacteria that works on it. It breaks it down. It, it takes it into little bitty pieces and turns it into little salts and little acids. And then they attach and detach from the molecules that flow through your body using transition metals. And the transition metals are there because they are harvested by bacteria that creates enzymes to go out and do that chemistry of breaking them down, putting them in a condition that you can use them in your body. I don't know, that was a big mouthful. <laughs> but it's a fact. If you, you can eat all you want. You eat this thing right here. Just eat that one thing right there. Go right through your body and never even know it was in you. You eat 
all the things you eat, if it does it get work done in your body, the first thing that happens is sli saliva starts working on it, then your stomach acids start working on it, and then there's buffers that come in, and then it goes into the intestines, and they have uh, acids and juices and pancreatic fluids and all kinds of things to break down the chemistry that's coming through your body. And in addition to that, you have these bacteria that set up slime zones called but bushy borders, br uh, brushy borders, I guess they are, which, let me show you. Alright, you see that? That's the, it's called the internal mucosal lining of a fallopian tube. Every single thing inside your body has to be protected from the chemistry that's walking around it all the time. There's all kinds of nasty things in you that if they could get across that barrier into you, you are going to be sick. And if they keep doing it day after day after day, you're going to have cancer. You're going to have chronic fatigue. You're going to be bloated. You're going to feel pain. You're going to have all kinds of issues in your gut. And that is what protects you right there, the slime. Now, why does it make slime? It's doing it to protect itself. <laughs> These are bacteria that's living down there saying, we're living in a really hostile environment. You better make some bacteria, slime to protect yourself. And it happens to be living right there. And you get slimed too, so you are protected. The bacteria breaks down the products coming in so it can eat. And the byproduct is metals and so forth. Okay, so getting back to this, you could come up there, it's called daily bread, and he says you can't, nobody can eat gluten and be unaffected. Well, that's, I, I feel that's just not true. Not true whatsoever. So, we go from 2009, here we are 2012, Zan Yulin, regulation of tight junctions and autoimmune diseases. Bingo. Recent studies indicate that besides digestion and absorption of nutrients in water and electrons, homostasis, another key function of the intestine is to regulate the trafficking of environmental antigens. <laughs> across the host mucosal barrier. Intestinal tight junctions create gradients for the optimal absorption and transport of nutrients and control the balance between tolerance and immunity to non-self antigens. This is your immune system right there. Now, what can you do to protect your immune system? Bacteria. And it's mucosa that protects it. Now, you can go back and read all up about this, but I have. And I am down to the point where I literally think, I went and looked at this too, CR1. Anyway, I, I literally think that virtually everything is a result of intestinal permeability. Right, I just fall down this because it's, it's all over. It's intestinal permeability. These results were validated independently in an in vivo intestinal permeability assay in which Solon, but not its cleaved form, induced a significant and reversible increase in both gastroduodenal and small intestinal permeability. It can make holes and close them right back up. Right, it looks like it's twisting or doing something. I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to talk too deep into this, but it's the role in the autoimmune inflammatory and tumor diseases. This is zonulin, celiac disease. This is what this other guy was talking about from the, um, who, uh, gluten, the uh, wheat gluten. He says it goes through your body and scratches it all and tears it all to bits. No, the mucus is going to protect you from that. You can get torn up if you're not, you know, if you have no protection and you're also going to get autoimmune diseases you're going to get pancreatic problems you're going to have everything in your body is going to be affected if your mu mucosa is not able to create enough gooiness to to keep away the stuff that is going to attack you and these are the differences celiacs Crohn's it's all it's everything schizophrenia all of that stuff is from your gut and everything, every, I'm telling you right now, do this. If you have any disease whatsoever, put it in followed by and digestive issues. All right, so celiac disease and digestive issues. Crohn's disease, well, we know that. 
schizophrenia. Let's look at that one. Look at this. Simple as this. Schizophrenia and digestive issues. Schizophrenia is a chronic, severe mental health condition thought to result from some combination of genetic and environmental factors. Listen, listen. It may sound surprising, but severity of symptoms in, in depression, anxiety, autism, and now schizophrenia have been linked to imbalances in the gastrointestinal tract three years ago. Harvard, the gut-brain connection. Pay attention to your gut-brain connection. It may contribute to your anxiety and digestive problems. Now, the digestive problems bothers your anxiety. It creates depression. It creates gut-wrenching experiences, butterflies in your stomach, issues that you feel. It's, it's, it's an unhealthy feeling. Stiffness, tense muscles, headaches, sleep problems, shakiness, tremors, loss of interest in sex, weight loss or gain, restlessness. Procrastination, grinding teeth, <laughs> difficulty completing work assignments, changing the amount of alcohol. It's, 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 it's a, a life destroyer when your bacteria in your gut is off.